What is marketing? Well, the Chartered Institute for Marketing defines marketing as the management process responsible for identifying, anticipating and satisfying customer requirements. Consumer behaviour is the study of consumers and the processes they use to choose, consume and dispose of products and services. By understanding trends in the market, suppliers can then facilitate consumer trends and therefore sell products that the consumers will want. Before purchasing different items, you always make a decision as to whether or not you want it. First, we've got the routine problem solving. This is used for regular purchases and therefore have very short decision making processes. Next, we have limited problem solving. This is slightly more risk and therefore has a longer decision making process. This is used for goods that are fairly expensive, such as new clothes or shoes. Finally, there is the extended problem solving. This is very high risk and therefore has a long decision making process. This is mainly used when purchasing something expensive, such as a new car. Let's move on to the first theory. It is the buyer to consumer's decision making process and I'm going to link it to my first purchase, a loaf of bread. This purchase was made from Tesco and is seen as a routine problem solving purchase, as it is seen as a regular purchase. The buyer to consumer theory is broken down into multiple stages. The first stage is problem recognition. This occurs when consumers see difference between the current state of affairs and the same ideal state of affairs. For me, I was shopping. I knew I needed bread, so I just selected a loaf that had a good date and looked fresh. The second stage is information search. Consumers survey the, the environment for appropriate data to make a reasonable decision. I did this as I knew that the price of bread doesn't fluctuate between many supermarkets, so I knew I'd get the same loaf of bread at the same price anywhere. Next comes the evaluation of alternatives. I had considered buying bread from other supermarkets, uh, such as Morrison's or Sainsbury's. However, I knew the price wouldn't fluctuate between all three uh, supermarkets, therefore I selected the Tesco's, which was next to my student accommodation, as it saved me time and effort. Post-purchase evaluation. This is where the consumer decides whether they are happy or not with the purchase. For me, I was happy as I needed a loaf of bread and was able to purchase one with a good date and looked fresh. The final stage is feedback prior to the next decision. This is where consumers can leave their opinion on a product. Therefore, I believe I was satisfied as the bread had a good date and was fresh and therefore was ready for me to buy. Let's move on to my next purchase, which was a pair of Nike React Element 55 trainers. I had seen these trainers advertised online for a while and desperately wanted the pair. The original price of these trainers was £165. However, when I was out one day, I went into the Nike store and I noticed that the price was reduced to £115. Instinctively, I knew that I needed to buy these pair of shoes, so once I was home, I purchased them off, off the Nike website. I am linking this purchase to Rogers' theory of the fusion of innovation. There, this is split up into several stages. The innovators are the first people to buy the products. They take a huge risk as the shoes aren't very popular when they first buy them. Therefore, these people are the first people to get reviews on these shoes. When I purchased these shoes, I was an early adopter. This is because these shoes were not really popular around the UK. However, they were, they were quite popular in the area I am from. Therefore, I knew a bit about the product and had read a few reviews about them online. Therefore, when I came across them that day in the Nike store, I knew I had to get them. And there was not much risk involved in getting them as I had seen the reviews prior to purchasing. Next, we have the early majority. These people are willing to embrace trends, but wait before purchasing an item. <laughs> then we have the late majority. These people only buy the product once popular. However, once they have bought the product, the popularity of this, the actual product goes down. Finally, we have the laggards. These people who lag behind the trends and therefore don't purchase the product until the, the demand for it is for them. I bought these trainers because I have a good brand loyalty to Nike. This is because they constantly produce stylish and good quality trainers unlike their competitors. To conclude, I believe that the theory that applies to my consumer behaviour the most is the limited problem solving theory as I am constantly questioning whether or not to take the risk and purchase products such as shoes. This is the end of my video, thank you for watching.